Many people do not understand what the tarot refers to as the fool's journey. This is a 21 step journey from novice to mastery and enlightenment. The journey of the major arcana is loaded with ancient mythology, symbolism, legends and stories that dive deep into the realm of human consciousness and experience. When you fully understand this journey and the wisdom concealed in the major arcana of the tarot, patterns of both the past and the present and the possible future will be understood. Not only will you understand how to read the cards better, but you will also be able to see the bigger picture of your own life and the many stages of spiritual development. The imagery and seemingly mysterious nature of the symbolism of the major arcana can initially feel overwhelming. In this video, we will explore how to approach the tarot as a storyline, with the fool as the central character, and in the process, discover how the mystery begins to reveal itself. This is the fool's journey. The Fool needs no number, as this is his journey. He is the first character that we meet in the Major Arcana. He is carefree, innocent, young, perhaps unaware and naive. He represents the power of the moment. He is about to embark upon his journey, filled with excitement and enthusiasm, unafraid and minimally prepared for the adventure that lies in front of him. He has all of his belongings in his knapsack, his trusty and faithful companion, his dog by his side, and he is preparing to take a leap of faith, trusting in the journey, even though he doesn't know what lies ahead. And so his journey begins, and presently he encounters both the magician and the high priestess. The dynamic and masculine magician is the master manifester with the will to project himself out into the world, and the fool can see that the magician is gifted, capable, dynamic, masculine, enigmatic and commanding. He is a mentor, a guardian and a teacher, showing the fool what he is capable of through mastery of the four elements, water, fire, earth and air, and their corresponding items, the love and emotion of cups, material possessions and work represented by the pentacles, the intellect and communication of swords, and the passion of wands. He demonstrates his wisdom and teaching through dreams, signs and synchronicity. The Fool receives this guidance, although much of this is hidden and confusing and for now the Fool still feels he has so many lessons to learn and many characters to meet. The High Priestess, on the other hand, represents pure, feminine energy. She is seated patiently waiting for the Fool at the gates of Solomon's Temple, where she is guarding the secrets of divine power. The Fool sees her beautiful and mysterious. Unlike the magician, she is inactive, listening, not speaking. She is opposite the magician, but she is also a teacher a mentor, silent while the magician is loud, dark while he is light. The Fool shows the High Priestess the tools of the four elements that the magician has given him, but he has to admit, however, that he doesn't know how to use this gift. The High Priestess then grants the Fool permission to read the ancient scrolls of wisdom, which she holds in her hands concealed. She is showing him how to trust his intuition, and that answers will be revealed in divine time. The Magician and the High Priestess are the Fool's personal masculine and feminine aspects, but next he has to meet the external embodiment of these characters, the Empress and the Emperor. The Empress and the Emperor can be seen as the mother and the father of the Fool. 
The Empress is nurturing, loving, abundant and giving, whereas the Emperor creates firm foundations and boundaries in the external world to protect those that he loves. In these interactions, the Fool learns the nature of love and nourishment and unconditional care and love and kindness, as well as rules, punishment, discipline and the need for structure and consequences in life. After this, however, it is time for the Fool to leave the safety of home and become an adult, independent of his parents. He is filled with the new lessons that he has been taught, but he still has so many questions that he cannot answer, and so he seeks guidance in the form of the Hierophant, and this is his first encounter with education and organized religion. Through the Hierophant's knowledge, passed down to the Fall from heaven to earth, and through the lens of hierarchy and schooling, the Fall learns a strong emphasis on teaching, learning, and religious institutions. Here the Fall learns and studies society. He now understands what it's like to be part of a collective. After leaving the Hierophant, the Fall is starting to develop a sense of purpose and begins formulating his goals for the future and for his journey. And at that point, he discovers a crossroads in his path and he has to make a choice in the form of the lovers. Through this choice, the Fall starts to understand that his destiny is in fact in his own hands. He can stay true to his original path, or he can take the path of true love, but the choice is his and his alone. By this time, the Fool is an adult. He has developed character and has a very strong sense of self. He is confident, even though he is still very young. Regardless of which path he decides upon, after this his journey will speed up as he continues on his adventure and meets the brave and noble charioteer. Through this encounter, the Fool learns not to give up and to believe in himself, but he also learns a sense of necessary aggressiveness in pursuit of one's own goals. This is an important lesson, for the Fool is about to meet his first true challenge in the form of strength. The Fall must overcome his struggles by grasping that mind over matter is at times the best solution. He has learned that strength comes from within to overcome bad situations, and he has developed much courage through his lessons thus far, but through the lessons that strength teaches him, he now learns that some beasts need to be tamed by pure kindness and warmth and not brute force. He can see now how important it is to have patience, and he understands quiet and personal inner strength. The Fall is then thrust into the introspective world of the Hermit, alone with his own thoughts, armed with what he now knows and yet removed from the world, the Fool must go inwards to seek the answers to the questions that he still has. He feels that he needs to know more in order to become whole. He explores his world, searching in darkness, finding himself. His knapsack is now a lantern, representing the inner knowledge and progression of his spiritual well-being, no longer focused on his material possessions. Now he only needs his own light to guide his way. Once he is ready and the knowledge of going inwards is manifest, the Fool encounters the Wheel of Fortune and he can see clearly now life as a series of riddles and twisting turns, encouraged by both fate and by free will. He is at peace with the fact that one day things are up, and the next day they are down, and the wheel keeps turning. 
he realises that everything is a cycle, and this prompts him to look forward, but also to look back on his life and the lessons that he has learned. He can now see that everything has consequence. He admits to himself the times that he knows he has been guilty of wrongdoing, and he makes peace with himself, knowing these mistakes can be learned from. Justice must be served in order for the fall to start a new chapter. He questions the lack of balance that he may have manifested in his life between worldly possessions and spiritual growth, and then finds himself suspended between two worlds in order to find a new perspective. Like the hanged man, he takes pause to look at things from a new perspective, and it is from this position of necessary discomfort that he realises that what he once took as blind truth was in fact the beliefs and ideas of his former teachers and not his own. Death then approaches the fool to show him the death of his old ways, freeing him from these falsehoods, clearing away the words of the emperor, the empress and the hierophant, and the fool is ready for a rebirth, a transformation for growth and improvement. The fool feels as though he is ready now to move on to the next chapter of his life. He is wiser, confident, changed by his experiences. He understands peace and patience and balance, embodied by the Angel of the Temperance card. The angel tells him that anything is possible with the right balance, and the fool understands. The fool now has a deeper spiritual understanding where emotion is measured and a middle path is forged between extremes. As he continues on the path, however, he suddenly finds himself at the bottom of a black mountain which he knew to be ruled by the devil himself. The fool is surrounded by temptation and sin, but he soon realises that no one here is being forced to stay. Everyone is there by choice and may leave whenever they please. He understands this isn't enslavement or captivity, this is a choice. The devil states that sinful urges shouldn't be denied, and the fool realises that acknowledging addiction and damaging impulses is the first step to overcoming temptation. With a lightning bolt from heaven, the walls of the fool's inner world crumble, a shocking and sudden change, and the fool finds all of this a dreadful revelation. He can see that oftentimes foundations are built that are not secure, and to rebuild a fallen tower, it has to be torn down, but still he is devastated and distraught at the daunting process of rebuilding what has now been lost. It is then that he looks up to the stars to seek hope. The star is one of the most beautiful, charmed and encouraging moments on the fool's journey. She appears when he needs her the most. A woman whose eyes were like stars offers the fool some fruit and through this healthy new ideas are planted. He now feels that he has the stars to guide him towards his future, and this gives him hope. With the stars, the fool also discovers that he has the profound and mystic moon to guide him. But the moon is uncontrollable and mysterious to the fool, and he cannot peer into all of the shadows that present on his path, and he has to trust the journey, although he feels vulnerable to illusion and dreams. The moon sheds light on the fool's subconscious thoughts, as well as his nightmares, anxieties and fears, but he slowly learns, one step at a time, how to overcome self-defeating thoughts. The night does not, of course, last forever, and the fool's journey is also nearing its end. 
The sun rises, shining brightly with a promise of homecoming and return. The sky is clear, the day is beautiful and filled with laughter and children at play, and an innocent child has questions for the fool, and the fool now has answers to give in joy and in love and in positivity. The fool can feel in his soul that he is at peace, that he is good and balanced, and he knows that his journey is almost completed. It is then that he finds himself at the gates of his ancestral castle, ready to reveal all that he has learned during his travels. The judgment card is that revelation. It is his call where anything is left unsaid is dealt with and the final inner work is completed. The fool can now truly let go and become at peace with his past. He is now ready to take his last step of the cycle and embrace the world, the end of this journey, while also hinting at the cycle that is yet to come. This is one of the most sincere aspects of the wisdom that the tarot holds. Life is an endless circle, a chance to learn and to grow through experience. As long as we inhabit bodies on the earth plane, there will be lessons to discover and conquer. And as the fool takes the last step on his path, filled with gratitude, he realizes he is about to step off the very same cliff from whence he started in faith and trust. The world shows the fool that everything happens in cycles, although he isn't truly where he started. He has learned so much. He has experienced so much. The journey starts again with the fool, only he has evolved. We are the fool in life, and although we seem to come full circle, each time we are a little further along on our path.